Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this Sven's Day Svelte episode, we're going to be talking about this meme. And um, this is a new series that I'm planning. It's actually very funny. Let me pop up in this window over here. I'd asked on Twitter uh, what I should be calling these weekly Svelte videos I'm planning on doing. And I got so many good suggestions. Never Svelte better. Svelte delicious. Sip of Svelte. Svelte and Company, Let's Felt, Svelte Linsky, Svelte in Five Minutes, Short and Svelte, Svelte, Svelte Wednesdays. I wanted to have a name rhyme with the day, like what is Wednesday? And none of them quite did that because there, there's nothing that rhymes with uh, Svelte or even starts with an S other than Saturday. Sunday, I'm not doing these videos on Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but Sven's Day is very funny to me because the Svelte community likes to put Sve in, in front of a lot of things like MD Svex. Um, so I thought that was very funny. And uh, I, I picked Sven's Day because it's a fake day all about Svelte. And that's what today is, it's Sven's day, right? So <laughs> I shared this meme, which was very funny to me, uh, which shows the difference between react, reactive state and Svelte reactive state, which as you can see, the react version of this includes, um, you create a component and you have to bring in a variable and then a set variable, um, and then a use state, which you have to import, right? Or you can do react out, whatever. Um, we're with Svelte, it's just let count equal zero. Now this received a number of criticisms and, and many of which of these were just kind of unfounded or, you know, what happens when you have something that you like, I like this thing, right? And then, um, you perceive that somebody is dumping on it and you say, Hey, don't dump on my thing. That's my thing. You know, I'm not dumping on your thing by posting this. I'm not dumping on anything. In fact, I I like React and I love Svelte. And so I wanted to share this because this is very accurate. And this right here is how you do reactive variables in both of these frameworks. One is simple, one is not. Now, again, the criticisms of this, of which I'm gonna get into in this video, they all kind of revolve around a few things, many of which talk about magic. And uh, I'll talk about magic in this video a little bit. But this thing has made it very apparent that people just use the word magic to mean whatever they want. They don't really think about what is actually magic in programming. Because let's take a look at these two, these two code examples here. One of which is a UI variable, okay? This UI variable is created and updated via a function. Now, in one of these situations, you call a function that updates a variable that updates the UI. In the other one, you update a variable that updates the UI. Which one of those is more magical? The answer is neither of them. They're both the same amount of magic, right? One of them, it calls a function that updates a variable that updates the UI. How does it update the UI? The render cycle. In felt, you update a variable that updates the UI. How does it update the UI? The render cycle. Um, and now a lot of these criticisms will say, well, I expect it, you know, I expect side effects when I'm using a function and I, I expect there to be a side effect with a function, but not when I update a variable. And my question to that is why do you expect there to be a side effect with this function? You expect that because you've been drained to know that use state updates the UI. However, in Svelte, it's not that hard to be trained to say updating a variable that's used in the UI updates the UI. You see how that's the exact same thing? Just because you expect there to be a side effect doesn't mean that there always is a side effect. I mean, if you write a normal JavaScript function, are you just expecting side effects in that thing? No, unless you write them yourself, you're not, you're not expecting there to be side effects. So where is the magic here? The magic is in the rendering cycle, how it knows what to update, when to update in the DOM. Now the Svelte and React do this in very different ways, and that's not what's important. What's important is that these are both the exact same thing in so many other ways. Um, another criticism on this was that this let count is equal to zero um, or count is equal to one or whatever is not a Svelte thing. That's just JavaScript. So why doesn't this photo say React versus JavaScript? 
Well, this isn't just JavaScript, it's updating the UI. Uh, normal JavaScript isn't updating the UI, you would have to do that by hand. So there is a bit of magic here, but there's the same amount of magic as in React. The difference here is that this is not just straight up JavaScript either. Granted, you're writing JavaScript, but it's felt itself as doing things behind the scene to know what to update in your UI, how to update it, and how to render correctly. So this isn't just JavaScript, because when it's compiled, uh, Svelte handles this different than just JavaScript, right? It knows how to update the UI with this. Now, so not just JavaScript, not any more magical or less magic than React, same amount of magic, right? Um, there were some other criticisms. Now, Michael Jackson probably had the best note here. And Michael, Michael, if you're not familiar with him, he has worked on React Router, Remix, a ton of great products, he uh, projects. He is an absolute uh, beast in this industry and in this development scene. Um, and he had this really great criticism or or thought that was like, well, the cool thing about React hooks is that you can compose them. You can create your own React hooks. You can make new React hooks out of those. And that can be a killer feature of this use state. Now, my argument to that is really that there's nothing preventing you from doing that exact same thing in Svelte. Here, we have a couple of examples, one of which is we have a very simple <laughs> a very simple UI state, which is just let is modal is equal to true. This is not something you can do in React. You have to create a use state. However, I'd argue that much of our UI state that we're writing is simple things like this, booleans, toggles, those types of things. And in React, you always have to reach for a use state to do that, which is this robust <laughs> thing compared to just setting a variable and updating it, right? But the cool thing about Svelte is that if you want the robust composable state, you can have that too. Uh, you can have both of these at no cost to you because it's built into the framework. And in fact, this example shows you if a writable store, I didn't write this code, this code just exists, um, but we have a writable store. Yeah, okay, is open, is equal to use toggle true. Does this look familiar to you? Because this looks familiar to me. And then likewise, let's go ahead and make another one of these. Like is open new. And maybe we can just duplicate this HTML. Is open new. And then toggle is open new dot toggle. We can click it. And we now have two separate independent variables that are via state, just like how you have with use state. And we did this via the writable. Uh, store within Svelte. And you can use this to have as much custom logic inside of a store, a store as you want to have. And to me, this is saying like, you know, if we want very simple UI state, it's as simple as defining that state. And if we want composable, complex, or more in depth state, we have those tools too. And that's why I like so much about Svelte because the React land is saying, you know what, are things complex? Deal with it. And that's okay but I prefer the simple version if I can get it because it's that much more readable. And it's, it's, it's a little thing, but you end up writing so much state in your application that let mo is modal equals to true. Oh yeah, that feels great. It's readable and you can understand exactly what's going on. So that's a big thing too, right? Um, now what's another criticism of this? Another criticism of this was uh, not even re <laughs> one is not even related to this, this meme I shared. The meme I shared was simply about reactive state in Svelte and React, how simple it is to have a simple reactive variable in Svelte versus React. That's it. And you got a ton of people being like, oh yeah, well, what about this in view and that in view or this in Svelte and that in Svelte or this in React and that in React, right? That's not what this is about. One, that's not what this is about at all, but two, uh, many of those complaints were around the templating language of Svelte. And that one I do want to address directly because we have if is open, show me, and if. Now, what exactly is the difference between that and if is open, ampersand, ampersand? And we can throw a fragment in here for just to make the point extra clear, just to make, even though this isn't exactly how you would write this component in React, let's just make this extra clear. What's the difference between this and this. Well, neither of them are just JavaScript. They're both templating languages. One of them is JSX, one of them is Svelte. They are both compiled and neither of them are just JavaScript, okay? So that is like one really thing that gets on my nerves is people say, well, you got this templating language, right? It's not just JavaScript. Well, it's closer to HTML than JSX is, right? So one, you feel comfortable with it because it's close to HTML. 
where JSX is a little bit closer to JavaScript. So you have things like class name versus class. Now, I obviously prefer the thing that's closer to HTML because I spent most of my career writing HTML, but I understand why people would like JSX better. But let's not kid ourselves and say that JSX is just JavaScript and not a templating language because it is absolutely a compiled templating language. It is. And now JSX is not the same thing as React. React and JSX are different. But you cannot tell me that this syntax is harder to read than is open ampersand ampersand. Because if is open is so much more readable to me than is open ampersand ampersand. Now, I have no problems doing it this way if this is the way that you have to do it in the framework. But let's not say that one of these is a templating language when the other one isn't, when they're both templating languages and they're both compiled. And even though they are different, <laughs> let's not say that one is just JavaScript and the other one isn't. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. So this is probably the spiciest I'll be because it's so funny. I had so much reaction to that tweet. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even make the meme. I found it on Reddit. I even said I found this on Reddit uh, at the time of recording this 321 retweets <laughs> and uh, 2.3 thousand likes on this thing, man, there were a ton and ton, a ton of comments and a lot of people arguing about magic versus not magic versus this, that, whatever templating languages and all sorts of stuff. And I'm here to say that just because something is simple does not make it more magical than something that's not simple. Okay. Magic is still in the updating of the UI. And both of these examples are the exact same. One of them is just a little bit easier to read than the other one. Okay. Now that's not to say that there isn't a much larger conversation to be had over Svelte versus React. There's a big conversation to be had there about the pros and cons of each. But let me just say that I love working in Svelte and I have written some big projects in it and it absolutely scales along with any sort of state that you might have uh, thoughts about. You can do state exactly the same in React if you love those over engineering uh, reducers and all that stuff. If you love it, you can do it in Svelte too. Okay. So uh, we also get simple stuff in Svelte as well. And again, let me just say, I don't hate React. I don't even dislike React. I love React. In fact, I love React so much, I've written a ton of tutorial courses on it. And for a long time, that's what our site was built in. But our site is now in this felt era. And this site is now leveluptutorials.com. So if you would like to learn more about Svelte or React or Vue.js for that matter, head on over to leveluptutorials.com. You can sign up and become a pro today. You can save 25% on the yearly plan. And you can learn HTML, CSS, React, Svelte, JavaScript, Node, GraphQL, TypeScript, Vue, Dino, GitHub, Gatsby, Figma, and anything else we have in this long array of different topics, okay? So uh, also, if you want to hear me talk about more stuff like this on the radio, yeah, the radio, you can check out the podcast I do with Wes Boss, and that podcast is syntax.fm. We do two episodes a week with the latest one talking about ES2022 and all of the latest and greatest stuff there. So check it out, leveluptutorials.com. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for enduring this little bit of a rant. In the next Sven's Day, we're going to be talking about uh, CSS preprocessor and SvelteKit. And one of the common things that people have an issue with, and I have a little neat trick to show you about how we can have mixins and variables and stuff inserted automatically on every single CSS or SCSS component that we have. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and I will see you in the next Sven's Day.